Last month, I asked you if I should spend my time and money transforming the 2023 LEGO Friends Modular into a real modular building. In a resounding show of support, you challenged me to do just that. So I went to the LEGO store, picked up a second copy of the downtown flower and design shops, added some of my own pieces, and gave myself 12 hours to come up with some sick modular buildings. Wait, 12 hours? LEGO designers in real life have months to put together the next modular building, and I'm only giving myself 12 hours? Well, the reality is I don't have months to come up with a LEGO modular. I have significant time constraints, so giving myself a quick deadline allowed me to get it done. The result was, I think, really incredible, but also one of the most challenging builds I've ever done. Did I get it right? Do these modulars work really good next to other LEGO modulars? How many likes of this video will it take in order for me to build another custom modular? Answers to all those questions and more in this video. Twelve hours. That's a bit more than the time it takes to watch the extended version of Lord of the Rings. So, I popped in the Fellowship of the Ring, opened the new copy of the Friends Modular, and started sorting. An hour later, Frodo and company were in the Midgewater Marshes, and I had everything ready to go. And it was time to make some key decisions. The first decision was how large should each part be. I decided on making the Flower Shop and Unity Street 24 studs wide each, with the design shop being 32 studs. Knowing that the weird angles in the design shop would be my biggest challenge, I also decided to start building the flower shop first. Step one of every modular building has to be making it compatible with every other modular building, so I put in the 1x2 Technic bricks, 9 studs from the back, and 9 studs from the front. Then I hit my first compromise using those large 1x5x6 panels. Yeah, they don't use those in the official modulars, but my collection of yellow bricks is 30 plus years old and they look like it. With the general layout placed, I moved on to working on the front facade. This was a lot of fun. In lengthening the building's width from 16 to 24 studs, I was able to add a second stained glass window to the left of the main entrance. Figuring out the interior wasn't quite as much fun. I built some tables and desks, duplicating some of the details from the original set. While Autumn put together some flowers, I began laying the flooring. Given the large amount of sand, blue, and light blay tiles that came in the set, I went with that combination, placing a sand blue trim around the perimeter of the shop and a 2x2 two two checker pattern throughout the level. Then came the best part of the flower shop, the light green and bright light orange details on the front. This was relatively easy, but still a rewarding experience. The dark blue and white awnings pop nicely against the bright exterior of the building. Is it just me, or does this look a little bit like that Sesame Street from a year or two ago? Let me know in the comments below if you agree. I filled in the rest of the back, had Autumn finish the interior, and got ready for the second floor apartment. I started feeling the crunch of not having the right pieces as I was building the sign section. I have a pretty sweet Lego collection, but I don't have a lot of bright light orange plates or tiles. After stealing, I mean borrowing, 
Some pieces from my kids, I started the cool yellow apartment. At this point, I had a quick panic moment. Where would I put the door to the apartment? How would the owners even get up there? My original idea was to put the door on the inside wall along the window, but that wasn't sitting quite right with me. So I went back to the first level and switched the dark brown 1x2 axle bricks from one side to the back. I'd place two doors on the back and have a porch connect out to Unity Street. Problem solved. Problem number two then set in. Would I have enough cool yellow bricks? I used some medium nougat profile bricks in the walls so that I could spread out my cool yellow bricks. And my first attempt at this received some negative reviews from both Kiara and Julia. Just too much medium nougat profile bricks. Eventually, I replaced a few of those profile bricks with more cool yellow, and I think it ended up looking significantly better. I played around with how to organize the large flower bouquets and the lights, then placed the nice roof detailing, well, upside down. And then another panic moment came. How would I make the roof easy to lift off? After all, the bright light orange inga pieces needed to sit flush with the cool yellow and medium nougat details. So to help with that, I went with a dark blue stripe, similar in style to almost every other modular, and added a second stripe of dark blue plates and tiles at the top of the floor, which made the side walls flush with the front. Problem solved yet again. Now I just had to construct a much larger roof than the original. It wasn't hard, but I had to find ways to stretch out the pieces, particularly the cool yellow tiles and bright light orange bricks. Autumn decided she wasn't going to loan out any more pieces, so I had to figure this one out on my own. And as the people of Rohan were migrating to Helm's Deep, I finished the roof and started planning out Unity Street. The first step for redesigning Unity Street was to figure out its depth. I knew it would be 24 studs wide compared to the original 16 studs in the set, but I needed to provide space for the fountain and benches and still allow for people to walk along the sidewalk. I ended up going with a 12 stud depth, which would have some implications for making it modular compatible, but more on that later. Another challenge was getting the sidewalk pattern extended to fit within the 24 studs, the medium nougat squares needed to be 5x5 five five on the sides, but 6 wide for the middle squares to mesh better with the fountain. The pattern wasn't too hard at first, but I ran into some issues once I started tiling the stairs. I decided to double up the staircase. I liked the symmetry of the look, plus it made use of existing pieces and provided a strong support base for the platform where people could hang out. It was a pretty fun time placing the 2x2 two two brackets with those quarter round tiles, and it was also really satisfying placing the fountain. One improvement I wanted to make over the original set was to provide more connection points for the benches. They're flimsy in the original, so I made sure there were multiple studs of connection for both. After I outlined the staircases, I started finalizing the overall depth of Unity Street. This required me to use a ton of tiles, and by the end, I was scrounging around for any sand blue 1x1 one one and 1x2 one tiles. The depth also influenced the side walls, which were a bit finicky to get placed. Because of the connection between the platform and the second level apartment for the flower shop, I added depth to the street, and to provide more strength, I included an additional line of Technic beams. As I built the platform itself, I started getting pretty excited. This was looking really good. Just a few tables, some flowers, and the lettering really added nice details to the build. And then, an epiphany. What if I took the tree from outside the design shop and placed it in the Unity Street? I could have it growing through the platform, rising tall and colorful in the middle of my modular city. So I tested it out, tweaked the height, and constructed the platform around it. I think it looks pretty sweet, and comment down below if you agree. Suddenly, it was time to make the finishing touches on my redesigned Unity Street. 
I moved the tables back a bit, added some flowers under the platform, made the connection to the flower shop apartment, and increased the width of the staircase opening so that the minifigs wouldn't bang their heads on the platform when climbing up the stairs. Finally, I added sidewalk tiles, lamppost, a little map of the area because I had to make it modular compatible using that 1x2 Technic brick, and a fire hydrant out in front of the flower shop, and then added more flowers to its roof. And as Pippin started lighting the beacons of Gondor, I was two-thirds of the way done with my custom modular. Before we get back to the build, I want to issue another challenge to you. If we can get 300 likes on this video, I will build another custom modular building, whether it's of an existing Lego set or something completely from scratch. The ball is in your court. This was one of the toughest builds I've ever done. Maybe it's because I'm not a great builder, but keeping the design consistent with the original while making it a real modular was extremely difficult. Throughout the build, I felt like I was constantly making the wrong decisions again and again. But the good news is that the early stages were easy enough. Extending the facade by eight studs to 32 wide on a base plate wasn't too complicated. I kept the main entrance and six wide windows the same, then extended the snot tile work along the base. But then the tough decisions started flying at me left and right. Where do I put the back door? What will comprise the far left eight studs of the facade? Where will the second floor come in? And how will it end up being modular? <sighs> Despite feeling a bit overwhelmed, I took it one step at a time. I kept the blue stripe along the front facade as in the original, then started working up the snot-built facade. The glassy exterior meant that it would be difficult to place a floor against the front wall, so I decided that the second level would only take up the back half of the building, kind of like a balcony. Once that was done, I got back to building the front facade, which was a lot of fun to see come together. The light blue walls with the large windows look great and keep the angled motif consistent from one side to the other. Moving to the back of the design shop, I wanted to maintain the glassy look, but I didn't have enough panels to do that. Instead, I inserted a couple of large windows in the back, which made it possible to see inside the building pretty easily and I think is unique to the LEGO modulars. I also added some furniture for display along with some artwork for shoppers to peruse. Another tough decision was figuring out how to include the staircases and the outdoor balcony. One huge drawback to the original set was that it included no stairs whatsoever. There was no way to get from one level to the next, so figuring this out was a bit of a headache. It was at this point that the Lord of the Rings was winding down. Frodo had destroyed the ring, and the four movie endings were in full swing. Knowing that it takes about 11 hours to watch the entire saga, I knew I was running out of time. With the stairs added and the second level framed in, I turned my attention back to the front. I added the solar panels to the roofs, built the outdoor balcony with plenty of glass panels, and a nice looking glass door entrance. With my 12 hours elapsed, I missed my self-imposed deadline, but only had the finishing touches left. I tiled the first floor interior, added the ubiquitous lamppost and some dark blade 2x2 two two tiles and jumper plates to the sidewalk, and called it complete. So instead of 12 hours, it took more like 13, but in the end, it was a rewarding experience and it challenged me to become a better builder. Perhaps more importantly, it gave me a new set of custom modular buildings to add to my modular city. Now, the only questions left are which buildings does it look good next to? And where will these buildings end up in my modular city? To help answer that question, check out this brief montage of the new custom modulars next to official LEGO modulars to see how they pair up.
Thanks for watching. Remember to like this video. 300 likes will get another custom modular building, and I hope we can get to that level. And always remember to keep building together.